This is the Form T1, my favorite mini Actix case to build in. Made of premium CNC anodized aluminum and it looks and feels amazing. This is my two month build update. Some things have changed, but I believe I found the best balance for my workflow. I've added unsleeved cables for better cable routing, two Fantex T30 fans, various 3D printed modifications, and a Thermal Grizzly contact seal, all for the hopes of better cooling. Let's go over the build and I'll give you my honest opinion, including pros and cons, and ultimately why this case will live on my desk for a very long time. The MSI B650 iEdge Wi-Fi motherboard is stripped of its gamer decals in favor of a clean, simple look. With a fan for the M.2 SSD, USB-C front panel connector, a reinforced PCIe slot, you can mount an additional M.2 SSD in the rear for more storage. The AM5 backplate is extremely versatile, giving you the option to mount many different coolers. The Ryzen 9 7900X has been a workhorse of this channel. It's constantly under loads from benchmarking, media decoding, and video production. Originally, I chose to swap out the stock M5 backplate from the Thermorite anti bend bracket. However, thermal paste would always find its way into the cracks of the IHS and PCB, making cleaning a nightmare. I received this Thermal Grizzly contact ceiling frame from a subscriber and has helped prevent thermal paste from creeping in. Much appreciation to him. There is a silicone gasket that wraps around the IHS for a tight seal. These are tightened in with four hex screws. Screws and tools come included. I always use the X pattern. I think it really matters. Thankfully, there is no way to over tighten these. I'm using a one terabyte Lexar NM790 and PCI Gen 4 M.2 SSD. I use this for basic tasks such as light gaming and storing basic files. For the memory, I have modified 64 gigs of Kingston Fury DDR5 5600 modules. The heat spreaders are from a company called Freeze Mod on Amazon. I really think these make the build look that much sweeter. They do limit the type of air coolers I can add to this build because they are very high clearance, but they still look great. The main attraction in my opinion is the Form T1. A case is highly sought after and admired. I have version 2.1 in the titanium color, which reminds me of an Apple product if they ever made a modular system. The precision of this case is top notch. My favorite thing is the light blue Gen 4 riser cable that comes included. For the GPU, I went with the RTX 4080 Super. It's a popular pairing option with the T1, and it's great for hardware accelerated tasks like creating 4K H.265 proxies in Adobe Media Encoder and gaming in 1440p and 4K. When building with a massive car like the 4080 or 4090 in this case, it's strongly recommended that you install the GPU when you're building the case. This helps prevent against scratching your case or even worse, your $1,000 plus graphics card. The Corsair SL750 doesn't need any formal introduction. It's renowned for a reason. I decided to add the PSU standoffs to give the 4080 some space. It mounts firmly with three points of contact. I recommend using the standoffs if you're in three slot mode. Any extra space for cooling is weighed in gold. Adding the PSU in for some reason is very satisfying. Another really cool thing about this case is how well the components fit together inside. It's like a game of Tetris. You may have noticed I put the thermal paste on too early. Eh, what's done is done. I did notice that some of the holes don't immediately align on the motherboard and the standoffs, but once you tighten it down, everything fits properly. The riser cable fits perfectly. It does require a small amount of handling to get it into the slot. I really love the way this cable looks. The T1 requires an extension cable that roots around the motherboard to connect to the PSU on the bottom. I like to run this cable first before adding any other cables like the 24 pan because it'll just get in the way. It helps if you kind of pre-train the cable to stay close to the PSU so that there's no pinching. Whenever working with the front panel connectors is a complete nightmare. Luckily, this case only comes with the power button, and so you need to plug in the power switch. I like to route this cable between the riser cable and the M.2 heatsink to keep things looking neat. To fasten the extension port to the back of the case, it takes two long countersunk screws that come included. It's a good time to install the cooler mounting equipment at this time. You'll need to install the cooler right side up and this keeps you from dropping various screws into the motherboard. One of the biggest updates to this build is the addition of the light blue unsleeved cables. I received these from a subscriber and I really appreciate the support. These things mean so much to me and I'm extremely grateful. 
I love the contrast of blue adds to the build. These cables aren't the most flexible, but they do rub pretty easily, especially if you're coming from stock PSU cables like me. Seeing these light blue cables with a light blue riser is really the icing on the cake. I really, really, really love the way this looks. I really might consider inverting this case so I can actually see the cables from the top. Unfortunately, the T1 doesn't come with anything to cover these back holes up with, so I 3D printed a couple caps. I'll put a link in the description of where I got these files from. I wanted to really max out my cooling, so I went with the Fantex T30 fans before I had the Noctua NFA 1225mm fans. It's a good idea to route the tubes before you put the sash right on. This helps to fit the actual pump block in. This part of the build can be a little bit finicky because you need to play with the fan and the fan bracket to get the holes to line up on the side struts, if that makes sense. Finally, I bolt down the AIO pump block and do a little bit of cable management and we're done. Many people are not a fan of this top hat. Some say it looks like a buzz cut. Others say it looks like a pompadour. I personally don't mind the way it looks, but for me, it serves a purpose. It gives me that a bit of extra clearance to mount a T30 fans. So I just finished putting it back together and I think it looks fantastic. I love the way it looks. I think this is my favorite build so far. So we're gonna get into some benchmarks and also some pros and cons, but let's just admire it for a moment. Here are some pros and cons, starting with the cons. The top panel distracts from the case's intended design. Many people are a fan of the straight lines and complete anodized look. 3D printing can be a very daunting task for some people, and this top hat is longer than most print bands. However, Reddit user nick 3 d Prints has created supports that allow you to print this on smaller printers. Lastly, the T30s are slightly louder than the Noctua's. I wasn't able to pick it up with my ears, but the decibel meter did show the difference. Now it's time for some pros. Better cooling. It might not be a groundbreaking improvement, but it's still better. The T30s are moving loads of air through the fins. Last but not least, you get better cooling options with the top hat. You can fit thicker radiators or fans giving you more control over your cooling. I probably change this thing around like once every two days or three days. The original top panel, top hat, air cool, AIO, it changes every day. 